Okay, in this video, I'm going to introduce you to Moodle, how to get logged on, how to navigate within Moodle, how to organize your information in Moodle, such as setting up folders and uploading files. So when you first get on Moodle, open up your website. When you come in here, uh, the address is very similar to the same format as when you get on Blackboard or you remotely get on Webmail or when you get on JPAMs remotely. So you go HTTPS backslash backslash Moodle.stpsb.org. This is the same address that students would use to get on Moodle as well. And when you first get on, this is the screen you would see, same as what your students would see. Here in the corner is the login button. So you would just simply click that and your username and password are the same as what it is to get on the computer at school, for Blackboard, for JPAMs, etc. When your password gets close to expiring, it'll pop up with a message, do you want to change your password? And um, you can't change your password. So if you click yes, you'll then get a message that says you cannot change your password from Moodle. You have to do that at school, and then it will automatically update your password in Moodle, on Blackboard, on JPAMs, etc. All right, so here is the home screen. Let me show you this real quick. You first get it, everything's going to be over here. You have settings, online users, navigation, main menu. If you want to clean it up and not have everything over here, um, I don't really, it's not real important for me to see who else is online at the time. So this little middle button here, this blue button in the middle, I can click that and it's going to dock it over here on the side. And then I can just scroll over it and see it. But that'll leave the things that I need over here most. First thing I want to show you is under here where it says main menu, you see Moodle 2.0. If you click on that, there's documents in here that will show you how to do different things. You have the manual, student guide, making, making a banner, how to upload files, which I'm going to show you today, and then how to embed discovery education videos at United Streaming. And you can create documents like that. We're going to go over that in another video as well. Uh, I've used the making a banner in PowerPoint. I'm not going to show you that on here because you can simply go here and it'll show you step by step. It's actually pretty simple. It's not a requirement to use Moodle. You can do it if you want to just make your page look a little fancier, I guess. So anyway, this Moodle 2.0 is a great little resource. I'm going to go back to Home. And so under Navigation, I can click on My Courses. And this was already set up for me. I did not set this up. But I teach two courses, English 1 and English 2. So I'm going to go in English 1. And these are the banners that I was talking about. I set up banners. You can just enter text if you want. But I set it up as, as banners. And by default, they give you five of these little boxes, five, four, three, plus your course description or topic outline box. In order to change anything on here, you need to turn editing on in this box right here. Click that. And then as you see, you have now all these little symbols to the side, plus these two drop-down menus uh, for add a resource and add an activity. Course information, I might keep my syllabus in there. I haven't uploaded it yet. I'll get to it eventually. Uh, I've been working on setting up my literature box, which is something I want them to be able to use this fourth nine weeks to start getting them accustomed to it. First thing I want to show you how to do is, if you notice, I have different folders set up in here in order to organize my information. I have short story, nonfiction, etc. Uh, to add a folder, it's very simple. You're simply, and you have to have editing on, you're going to come in here to add a resource. Under add a resource, you click on folder. And I'll be very honest with you, the only thing that I've really messed with, if you see here where it's red and has a little um, star by it, that's mandatory. The only things I really fill in are the name and description. They have other options you can do. I just haven't learned how to do that yet. Uh, so I'm going to just Alright, so 
So I have the name and the description. You have to have both of those in order to make a folder. Now from here, you can go ahead and add files. If you already have your files on your hard drive and you want to add them, you can do so here. Um, you can set here as well whether it's visible or, or whether it's hidden. But you can do that on the main page too, and I'm going to show you how to do that. You can restrict access. I haven't messed with this yet, but this is in order to allow just certain time frames that they can see it. And then activity completion, uh, that's where they can mark it completed. And you can also have, there's some place on here where you can have where they have to complete certain activities before they can do others. Um, but I'm not going to deal with those, and I'm just going to save and return to course. And as you can see, now I have a folder labeled Moodle. Um, I can move this where I want by this first little icon. See where it says, you hold it over, it says move. So I'm going to move this maybe up here. Okay. But then I think, you know what, this really has information, and I'm wanting to further organize my information under Romeo and Juliet. I can move it down under Romeo and Juliet, and then I can move it over so that it looks like it goes with Romeo and Juliet. Maybe I'll have certain types of handouts in one and other things in another. And then, so, you know, and then of course it gives you the other area where you can move it back. And then you have here where you can go in and you can update, change your information, change the name or whatever, and you get all the same stuff here um, if you wanted to update and change any of the information. That's going to be that little hand with the pencil. Uh, another cool little thing on here is this duplicate. If you have certain settings and you want all the settings to always remain the same, you can simply duplicate, save you some time, and then just go in and edit it with this button and change the name. So, as it thinks about it. And then it'll tell me right here, edit the new copy, because they figure I don't want to do this thing. Rule number two. So now I have a duplicated one. And then let's, let's say that I don't want them to even look at the information that's in here. Maybe it's stuff I don't want them to see yet. I can hide it from their view with this little... I think, and then notice how it's grayed out, or I can turn it back on. If you notice, these are all grayed out, grayed out because I have the little eyelashes with the eyes shut. If I want them to see it, I just simply turn it on. And this is so useful because I can clean up the page that they see, and then for instance down here I have a test, I don't want them to access that until I'm in the lab and they're ready to go with it. So I can just keep this turned off, they can't see anything on the test until I'm ready for them to do so. And then this one, it's assign roles. Uh, I'm, I haven't learned anything about assigning roles other than I think that this is if you want to share it with teachers but you don't want to allow them to change anything. So, so here you have teacher, non-editing teacher, and then student. So you can have you know different roles. I haven't learned a lot about that, but I wanted to show you right here you have question marks and these little circles. You're going to see that all throughout the Moodle and it gives you more information about it. Now, this isn't much. This is just a simple description of what it, what it is. If you want more help, you click on more help. And then it gives you a lot of information, as you can see. I used this whenever I was learning how to make tests, which we'll do in another video. Okay, up here at the top, you can also navigate back to certain parts. So I'm going to go back to English 1. Now, these aren't folders that I want to keep, so I'm going to go ahead and delete them here with this X. And that's how you create folders. That's how you use all these different buttons here as well. Now, I want to show you in Romeo and Juliet, these are all the files that I have added it in here. That I have, excuse me, added in here. Um, if you want to add more files, you at any time can just hit Edit and then you just go in and you're going to click Add, upload a file, and then you would just find your file that you want to add. I'm just going to put one, put it in. You can give it a certain name. And then there it is. And it puts it automatically in alphabetical order. Um, and then you would have to hit Submit to save it in there. 
I don't want this in here, so I'm going to hit cancel. So adding files into your different folders are very, it's a very simple thing. Okay. Last thing I want to show you on here, if you look over here on the side, you have all this under navigation where you can simply get where you need to go quickly. Um, under settings, if you want to see what the students see, switch roles to students. Now, everything that I had grayed out is not even on there. I had these entire blocks grayed out so it just says not available. It's not an option to gray out the course information in the very first box. But under literature, the only thing you can see is Romeo and Juliet and Romeo and Juliet Discussion 1. We'll talk about discussions and forms on another video. And then I can go back over here under settings, return to my normal role. When you return to your normal role, it automatically does not have editing on. So if you need to do more editing, you can turn it back on. Up there. And last thing, if you want to see all your students, I did not put the students in. I'm not sure if they're doing that for all teachers or if that's something you're going to have to learn to do, but that was done for me. Under settings, you go under users, enrolled users, and there's a list of all my students for ninth grade. It does not seem to separate it by class, but I can't. Um, I haven't figured out if that's an option yet. All right, so that's the basics of how to get around on Moodle. And I hope that you learned something from this. There will be more videos to come.